So in this video, I wanted to give a brief introduction to generating random numbers and actually also random matrices of numbers using MATLAB. Now, if you're unfamiliar with MATLAB, then this is what you might see if you open up the program. In the middle, which is the important part to focus on for now, we have what's called the command window, and that's where we're going to type commands. And in other videos, we'll talk about what some of these other screens mean. So the core random number generator in MATLAB is a function called RAND. And if you type RAND, what you'll see pop up is a random number between 0 and 1. If I type it again, I see a different number. Okay. So RAND can be used to generate numbers which are uniformly chosen in the interval 0, 1. And you can also choose multiple such numbers simultaneously by giving RAND various inputs. Now, if you type RAND with a parenthesis, you'll, you'll see some options pop up. If you just type a single number, what you'll get is a matrix which has 10 rows and 10 columns. For example, if I enter 10, if I enter 2, I get a matrix of 2 rows and 2 columns. If I add a second argument, for example, 2, comma 1, then what I will get is a matrix with 2 rows and 1 column. And you can compare that with what would happen if I entered 1, comma 2, for example, which would give me 1 row and 2 columns. So this is an important thing to always remember about MATLAB. All, all of these objects are matrices. Matrices have two dimensions, a number of rows and a number of columns, which you would like to refer to. So now that we've covered the basic RAND function, another useful function is RANDI, which is short for random integer. And the way that RANDI works is if you give it one argument, for example, 6, let's say, what it does is it generates a random integer between 1 and 6, uniformly chosen from those 6 numbers, for example. So if I typed randy10, then you know I got 1 this time, but I could repeat the command, and of course I would get different numbers uniformly distributed between 1 and 10. So randy can be useful, for example, if you wanted to simulate rolls of a fair die. You can also generate matrices of numbers with randy by supplying additional arguments. So the first argument always gives the maximum value that can be generated. And then the second and third arguments, if you choose to enter them, would give the size of the matrix that you're asking MATLAB to generate. So for example, randy651 generates a matrix with five rows, one column, and numbers drawn at random from one through six. Now you can also store the output of a use of randy or rand as a variable. So for example, if I want to store the outcome of an experiment where I'm drawing a random number between 1 and 10, and I actually want to do, let's say, 100 of them, right? then notice over here in this workspace, this variable r pops up. And r now is a 100 by 1 matrix. Its dimensions are next to it, storing the results of that experiment. Also, there are times when you want to suppress the output of a command, and in MATLAB that can be done using a semicolon. So with the semicolon at the end of the line, MATLAB performs this command, it stores the output as R, but it doesn't actually display the outcome and clutter up your screen. 